I don't know if I'm emotionally prepared for this. I'm just gonna get straight to the point. I did not like season three of The Crown. No! 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 no. <laughs> It is the most crownless season of The Crown thus far. In comparison to seasons one and two. It was more I could do a finger painting. And I tried. I really did try. I watched the entirety of season three no less than six times. And every time I finished it, I was left with a feeling of... Disappointment, of underachievement and directionlessness. Now I know that it'd be easy for someone to stay... Jen, it's just a show. Aren't you taking it a little too seriously? No one wants to hear it. Well, sadly, it's not blunted my judgment to your mean-spiritedness and... Jealousy and general pusinalaminity. Pusinalamin... Small-mindedness. I am incapable of ignoring the facts when it comes to historical period dramas. Prince Charles himself stated something that I thought was rather obvious when he met Peter Morgan at Buckingham Palace. He stated, Script writing isn't so easy, is it? I tend to think it's not what you leave in, but what you leave out that's most important. Yes, sir. Very good, sir. Quite right, sir. Boy, oh boy, they left out a lot. There was detail in season three, but the attention was on the wrong details. Britain in the 1970s is likened to the dark ages of the decades following World War II. There's a treasure trove of climactic events to choose from on which a drama could be based. So why was this material largely ignored or diminished in lieu of a montage that's perfunctory? I mean, it's good background information for a documentary, not a supposed fast-paced drama. I don't know why, but today seems like it's going to be a great day. La la la, blah, 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 I should spend more time with my kids. I get an image in my mind of the producers and writers sitting across from a panel of historians who are giving them wonderful context and background for the season. And instead of listening, the producers are like, well, those of us who have not had the opportunity or the interest, frankly, to uh, familiarize ourselves with the details of the earlier investiture. The result of which being a very slow-moving, disjointed plotline that doesn't really have a foothold in reality and is a concoferous mess that will never end. You mean said you go on rather? On and on and on and on. Mm. I'm not going to drone about the film style or story of season three, though believe me, there's no shortage of issues I took with it. My focus will primarily stick with why season three is a hollow crown in its historical context. One of my biggest pet peeves and most unforgivable sins of this season, Princess Margaret's American Tour. Can't even handle it. Don't get me wrong, Helen the Bonham Carter is one of my favorite actresses, and I don't place the fault of my character nitpicks on the actors themselves, with one exception. I'm sorry, Tobias. It's nothing against you. You are just far too good at what you do. Be friggin' terrifying. Why do I make you uncomfortable? <laughs> Margaret was my favorite character in season two, Side note, season two is my favorite. Margaret was done in injustice in season three. Granted, she was more of a rock star in comparison to her sister. Honestly, she was. I'd go, I'd buy a ticket. They amplified characteristics of her that really weren't as wild and outlandish in comparison to her other more dignified demeanor. 
just listen to some of the accounts of people who knew her. If you overstepped that mark, became a little too familiar, perhaps, then she would become very royal, and very grand, and you would be put in your place. Not the type of person who would waltz up to the White House and kiss the president. <laughs> also, we see less of her than in previous seasons, despite the fact that the trailer centers a lot of attention around Margaret and Tony's relationship. So it was really dissatisfying to see the lack of Margaretology than what was promised and what we're used to in previous seasons. Yes, that's the advantage of having a character to bring. Too much character. Speaking of character, the one player of season three who I found to be the most grievous of every episode, who was made to be the most clumsy, awkward, irrelevant, and frustrating, was the crown itself. That's bordering on treason. The portrayal of Queen Elizabeth is downright appalling. That is treason. From the besmirching fake tears of Abervan, which for the record were not fake according to witnesses who were like literally standing right next to her. She came as soon as she could. She did feel very, very much over this. The Queen's return to Abervan now four times, fulfilling the promise she made half a century ago to never forget them. The Crown visits hospitals, Martin, not the scenes of accidents. I mean, d does it though? For, for sure? Y you sure about that? It means that? The dim and generally awkward wit. Good to one another. Kind to one another. Both of you. <sighs> I was a little clumsy. I know, but... I thought no buts. Got him. To the blank and catatonic staring. Lifeless eyes. Black eyes, like a doll's eyes. And overall, cold and distant persona, this does nothing more but fly in the face of everything we've come to know about Queen Elizabeth thus far. That is to say, a woman who wielded both power and intelligence in a subtle but sensible way, while also being someone with huge depth of compassion, but knowing when to be pragmatic. A kaleidoscope that we don't see showcased in this interpretation. Instead, the crown is even more vulnerable than in marionettes, because this time, it's justifiable. She's vile and cold like that. Because she is portrayed that way. It almost seems intentional that she's left so wide open to criticism, contention, or just frankly being ignored. Perhaps I should make it clear. Perhaps I should make it clear that nothing is going to stop me. Margaret! Nothing of the leader she was in seasons one and two. It also confirms slanderous comments made of the queen in the past and present. A middle-aged woman, so incurious, unintelligent, and unremarkable. Which I find rather upsetting and unfortunate but also surprising, because Peter Morgan was the writer of the critically acclaimed and suitably named movie The Queen in 2006, where it goes out of its way to defend Queen Elizabeth's reaction and response to Diana's death in a way that had never been considered before. That woman has given her whole life in service to her people. Fifty years doing a job she never wanted. A job she watched kill her father. She's executed it with honor, dignity, and as far as I can tell, without a single blemish, and now we're all baying for her blood. All because she's struggling to lead the world in mourning for someone who, who threw everything she offered back in her face, and who for the last few years seemed committed 24-7 to destroying everything she holds most dear. Which leads me to a theory about why the personality of Queen Elizabeth has been altered to such a degree. Old bet particularly in her relationship with Charles, and also why she's so absent throughout the series. She literally takes a back seat from the spotlight and focus of the overarching story unlike in seasons past. Perhaps to make room for something big in season four? Diana. 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 Of course. It makes sense that the writers would want to prime the show for its most controversial character yet. 
controversial in the sense that they will be tapping into very strong emotions that people can still remember. But that doesn't change the fact that the Queen, aka the Crown, Elizabeth, the thread tying them together, is primordially absent or kept at an unrelatable distance for this season. And without the Crown, what is the show about? Fornication? I don't want to leave this review like a lemon on a paper cut. What is it you're trying to prove? I genuinely did find great enjoyment out of the portrayals of both Prince Charles and Princess Anne. It gave me chills hearing Charles' voice and how accurate he sounded. If I've learned anything uh, during the last eight weeks, it's been about Wales in particular and its problems and what these people feel about Wales. The first and true Prince of Wales at the gates of Carnarvon Castle. I especially loved the forgotten background of Charles' aptitude and fondness for theater. Did you know the Prince of Wales is actually quite the comedian? You got bigger legs than that, huh? Absolutely. You think you can tell me what to do? Yeah. Look, it's all your fault. Not my fault. Please. I'm going to make a pun out of you if it kills me. I love it, though. Do you? This is man, you. That's not like I got shorter legs than him. It's not fair. And it isn't that there's not much to say about Princess Anne, it's just that she's pretty capable of saying it for herself. Um, how, has that, how has that struck you? It's obviously you haven't liked it. No, it, it can be very irritating. <laughs> Even if this particular scene bugged me quite a bit, and probably never happened in the context of how the show is dramatizing it, that Princess Anne's relationship with Andrew Parker Bowles overlapped that of Camilla and Charles. No, that came later. The performance, not that one, was just so well done, it was easy to overlook. As opposed to what? The hysterical and neurotic way I normally behave. I hope season four continues to develop these characters in a way that they deserve and not judging off of what the media has dictated in the past or by invalidating their importance and humanity for the sake of plot. Honestly, I could keep letting my thoughts run away with me about season three, but I'd rather not do that. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad that there's a season three. It's nostalgic and educational for those who don't really know the royal family. Unfortunately, season three just didn't do a very good representation this time, and it's far too distracting for me. So to keep going would just create rancor and resentment. And while I may approve of the decision, none of this nonsense was my idea. This is his mess. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was very, very stressful for me. Share with me your ideas about what you thought of season three. I know a lot of people loved it. I'm just the devil's advocate here. I mean, if it would help. Should I sigh and moan dramatically? One does like to fit in. Unless, of course, you're not even a courtier of this channel. To become one, you must subscribe. Otherwise, I frankly don't care what your opinion is. I hope you have a good day. Everybody stay safe and practice social distancing, much like the camera did during season three. And I hope you have a good day. Bye.